All right, in this video, I'm going to make pieces move around the board based on the roll. So in the last video, I made this little block move around based on a test, a test script. If you don't have this world right here, you can come to this website and I'll put this URL in the description. You click on this URL, hit these three dots, edit, it opens up in Roblox Studio and you'll have your own copy. This name may change. I just updated it to this kind of awkward name here on based, uh, what is a dice roll moving pieces based on roll. So you can go ahead and do that. Let's get to my board right here and I'll start updating it. I am going to get rid of my makeshift shoe, right? So under game pieces, that, that shoe just disappeared, which also means my test board script is not gonna work. For now, I'll just disable that. And let's get some pieces. All right, so we'll go over here. Let's say Monopoly pieces, and they have some Monopoly pieces. They're not, they're not the original set pieces, but they're good enough. I got a hat, I got an iron, got a wheelbarrow, and I got a little. I don't know what that is, like a, like a unicorn or something. So that'll work for now. Let's go ahead and open up that model. It's called Monopoly pieces, and they're not labeled. I'm just gonna copy these four pieces. And I'm going to put them into my game pieces right under my game board model. So game board, game pieces, and then I'm going to change the name of these two. So this is an iron. This is a wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow. I think that's how you spell it. And this is my hat. And this one is unicorn, I think. Close enough. All right, so we're going to get confused on who's moving what piece. Let me get rid of that toolbox there. Let's put billboard GUIs on there. So I'm going to go to my iron and hit a B for billboard GUI. And then I'll just go ahead and put a text label on that. That's pretty big. Let's go ahead and make sure your billboard GUI is um, selected and I'm going to make it smaller. I'm going to go to the size, maybe make it like 80 by 20. And let's move it up a little bit. So we'll say studs offset world space, open that up. And on the Y, I'll move that up maybe what? four studs, maybe five studs. There we go. So that's over my iron. That'll work pretty well once it, all the pieces are spread out. Um, let's go to our text label. Uh, you know what? I made the text label small. I didn't make the billboard GUI small. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh yeah, I did. Oh no, the text, text label is big. Let's change the size of the text label. I'm going to make it one comma zero on the X and one comma zero on the Y. That's a hundred percent of the size of the billboard GUI. And we don't have to worry about the, the text itself. We're going to change that when we assign a player to it. I might change the font here to like cartoon and text color. I don't know, let's make it like a yellow. And then I'll do a text stroke transparency of one and maybe make this text scaled. I think I'll make the background of that um, invisible too. So background transparency, make one there. Because we're going to have, sometimes we're going to have a couple, a couple of things on top of each other. We don't want to get too jammed up. I'll keep these names just like that. And I'm going to duplicate billboard GUI here, drag one to the wheelbarrow and duplicate, drag one to the hat, duplicate, drag one to the unicorn. Uh, you know what else I should have done here? Let me go ahead and select each of those billboard GUIs and let's make them invisible for now. Let's go ahead and it should be like an enabled. Here it is enabled, we'll unenable it. And then when the player's assigned, it'll pop up. All right, that looks pretty good. That's a lot of work for just a couple pieces. Let's go to our board utils. It's a module script. 
and that's got all of my tile data and stuff like that. Let's get the game pieces here so that we can call it from the game loop when we assign it to our players. I'm going to say local, I'll call them avatars. Avatars, and it's script.parent dot game pieces get children there we go and what else we got to do you know when we were doing the tweening of the of the show we did an offset if you come down here like for handle corner and pass go when we did these tweens we offset the show or the block by this amount of of um space we went up one stud in the air so that we wouldn't go into the center of the tile that we we're moving toward but we have that like in three different places and i don't want to hard code values in like that so i'm just going to copy this one here let's see, copy that and i'm going to say uh avatar offset right and then I'm actually going to move it up a little because I noticed those game pieces were bigger. So let's move it like 1.5 studs higher. That looks good. And let's update those, those tweens. So in handle corner, when I'm tweening towards this position, I offset it in the height by one stud. I'm just going to use that value there. And we'll do that here on the pass go, exact same thing. Now, if we decide we want to move it up or move it down, we only have to change it in one place. We only have to change it up at the top of the script. There we go. That looks good. What should we do? What else should we do here? How about, let's get a function which will call from game utils. Board utils, or game utils will call board utils. And we're gonna call it get avatars. And I'll just return my avatars. There we go. Now we'll get this set right here. We can get that in the other script, the one that's going to be driving our movement. Also, let's put let's update the billboard GUI too. So we'll say function board utils. So when a player is assigned, we're actually just going to assign the player a piece. We're not going to let them select it yet. That takes too much time. We will add that. I think I'll do, let's see, we're gonna send in the piece and then we'll send the name of the player. A name should be good. We should understand that. So I'll say piece. Remember we have a billboard GUI on here. Billboard GUI dot text. Oh, let's enable it first. Enabled equals true. Good, and then we'll do this piece dot billboard GUI text label dot text will equal the name of the of the player and that way we won't get confused of whose piece is whose I think that's all we need to do for our bill our uh, board utils and we can't we can't forget that this init board map actually happened in the test driver so I'm gonna I'm gonna init that in my game loop so let's go down here to server script service. That's where I have my game loop. I'm gonna open that up. And in there, let's get a reference to our board utils. We'll say a local board utils. We'll say require workspace dot game board dot board utils. All right, now we can use these utilities in our in our game manager. So is enough players is good. Intermission is good. What we're going to do is when we prepare our players, we're going to assign an avatar, and we also have to keep track of our current tile for the player. Let's And then down here in take turn, this is where we're going to move our piece. So here in add player we have the session data that we initialize and i want to keep track of my avatar it's for each player so session data has all the information for the player during the game 
I'll say avatar is going to be equal to nil at first. And then we also want our current tile that we're sitting on. And I can go ahead and make that a one. All right. Now we'll go to prepare players right here and prepare players. Let's go ahead and init our board. So we have our board utils, init board map. That's good. And then we'll go local avatars will equal board utils get avatars. All right, then we'll have our avatars. And now down here, we're looping through all the players or initializing their data. So we have to be careful if we have more players and avatars, which we could because we only have four avatars there, we'll get an, we'll get a, uh, an array exception for having uh, being out of scope of the array. So just make sure that if you're going to have like five or six players playing, you got to have more avatars than that. All right, so we'll say data avatar will equal avatars, and I'm going to use this index i. So these are square brackets. And this I is this I right here, which was keeping track of the spawn positions, All right? So we have four spawn positions. We have four avatars. We can only have four people in this game or we're going to start getting some errors. You can add more if you want, but that's extra work. All right. And then another thing we're going to do is we're going to initialize or at least reinitialize our current tile just in case. There we go. One. So we're all going to start out on go, which is one if you look in board utils. All right, that looks good. Now, take turn. And right here, we can keep that roll in there. And I'm going to do session data for the player. That's a square bracket. I want to do the current tile. I want to get the new current tile after we move equals board utils move piece. All right. And then we'll have our session data, the player's avatar. I need speech quotes there. Avatar. Let's move this down to the next line. It's getting kind of big. Oh, I don't know why I put a comma there. I didn't mean to put a comma there. There we go. I do want a comma here. So the first uh, argument in move piece is the item to move. So that's our avatar. We assigned it to the player. The second argument is current tile. So we'll say session data. Each player, we're going to keep track of the current tile. Player. Speech quotes. Current tile. And then we're going to have our roll value. Roll value. Ooh, that's a big line right there. Here, maybe three lines. Might be easier to see like that. Yeah, that's good. And I think we're good. I think we're good to go. Let's go ahead and try this. Come over here. And I'm going to go to, we got to make sure we, how many, what's our minimum number of players? Players needed is three. So I'm going to go to my test server. I'm going to make sure three players is selected here. I'm going to hit start. I'm going to pause the video because um, it takes a couple minutes for my test thing to start up. All right, so now we have three copies of the game getting started. And we're in intermission. We haven't teleported over yet. Boom, we got teleported over. Looks like player three is the first person to roll. So let's go on over here and roll the dice. And I have no way to really see it right now. So I'm going to look. Ah, 10. Okay. So now the iron's moving. He should go all the way to just visiting over here. All right. That looks good. Now the next person to roll is player two. So we'll take a look at what we got. And that is a 10. So it looks like I might have to increase my randomization a little bit on my dice. So he'll be on just visiting. And this is going to be interesting because he's going to go right inside the other one. 
because we haven't taken an account for that, but that's fine for now. All right, now who's going to roll? Player one, let him roll. If he gets a 10, I'm just going to uh, fix that now. Oh, here we go. So, what is that? Nine. So they'll go all, he'll go all the way. The hat will go all the way. Oh, look at that. We didn't assign our, we didn't assign our hats and stuff. Everything seems to be working, but let's do that real quick. Let's assign the hats and stuff to our, uh, or what do you call it? The tags to our, our pieces. So just hit this clean up here and in our prepare players right here, let's go ahead and do, um, board utils that was it set name and the first one for set name was piece well, the first argument was piece second argument was name so we'll get the piece that's the session data avatar oh we didn't assign that yet let's do, let's get this one here we assigned it down here so the session data wouldn't have had it there we go, avatars. And then let's put our player dot name in there. Now we'll go ahead and try it. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause it and then start that up again. Here, let me just hit the start. All right. Now we're gonna get teleported over there. And now. There we go. And now our our little tiles or our, our little billboard GUI is are going to show who owns what what piece All right so i am player two i will have the wheelbarrow oh uh, but it's player three's turn to move and he's gonna have the iron all right so we're gonna get our dice roll and that is a so what eight so there he goes eight and that's eight right yeah, is that what we rolled? Or six, it must have been a six. There we go, that's a six. All right, now it's player three, good. So player two, we're the wheelbarrow, right? Let's check to see what we got. That's a seven. There we go, wheelbarrow should go one past player three. Looking good, all right. And just for the heck of it, let's get our, another roll in there. What was that? A seven, I think. Another seven. Yeah, I might have to bounce the dice around a little bit more because I'm getting a lot of similar rolls. All right, looking good. So uh, in the next video, let's see. I'll I'll continue onward with that. We might have to start putting some money in here and maybe some other gameplay stuff. And don't forget, we have to get maybe we'll decorate our board a little bit so it looks more like a Monopoly board.